Friends and honorable subjects of Emperor Cannoli, the devil of the Byzantine Empire, welcome to Crusader Kings 3. Now, before we begin today, I should point out I'm not going to be here Sunday. Um, so I'm recording this episode of in the normal time I record an episode for uh, the, the Saturday when you're watching this, which is just about to turn Saturday midnight on <laughs> on like Friday evening slash Saturday morning. Um, so this is about the right time. But after this, I'm immediately going to record Monday's episode. I'm not here for Sunday. Sunday. Um, so I, I'm going to take Sunday like uh, completely off, miss that content, and then just record ahead for Monday instead. So I've got that little buffer there. Um, so I'm going to be moving right onto that. So I won't have time to read your comments or anything like that one in the interim. But uh, we've been set up for greatness today. You may, if you cast your eyes down to the bottom of the map, notice a brand new icon on the bar. And we've got to give everybody, please give a round of applause, a shout out, a thank you to Gareth. For uh, same Gareth, by the way, who has made all sorts of remod mods, uh, big contributions like the Petal series for the the Caravan Dryads and the really cool From Ashes to Ashes mod. Uh, went deep diving into the code and found out that my uh, original assumption with the art mod, the uh, what, oh shit, what's the actual mod called? I can't even remember now, and I've been looking at it all day. That's it, medieval arts. I had in my head feudal arts, which wasn't quite there, but good enough. Medieval arts and the medieval arts more special buildings mods. I um, I went through the whole load order, you might remember, like 10, 15 episodes ago, trying to figure out what was wrong with it, and there wasn't a load order issue. So Gareth did a deep dive and found out it was actually just an initialization issue because I added it halfway through the save. Certain variables didn't wake up and, and work as intended. So if you are playing along, if you're playing along at the same time as me, I haven't been updating the mod pack for exactly reasons like this. A lot of the mods are updating and changing, and it's going to be a lot of technical support for yourself if you're not kind of super au fait on Crusader Kings. Um, so I've kept it kind of stable on Steam, but a bit more unstable on my side, and we found a fix for it. So if you have installed this mod yourself, I will write what you need to do in the comments to get it working. But massive shout out to Gareth for that one. Big thank you to Dale as well, who did a big deep dive loading up different saves to try and figure out what was going on. So even though I am going to be pre-recording a little bit here, we've got enough things to do to definitely last us two days. There'll probably be 30-minute episodes for uh, today and Monday, just because, again, I'm having to record two at once here, so I'm trying to be a bit more careful about my time. So the first thing, the, the first big goal, of course, I want to do with Cannoli is get him up to Religious Icon, because that would be... The, the manipulation is effectively complete, then. The masterful man himself, the, the Machiavellian expert, uh, completely unrivaled in, in the entire realm, even though he is infirm, even though he is 89 years of age, is unrivaled in... Intrigue. He's arguably like hit his peak here, even though his intrigue skill was a little bit higher a little while ago. The man's doing amazing work. You, you can't deny it. Is it better to be fear or loved? Why not both? Ask Cannoli, as all of his vassals are terrified, yet simultaneously he's best friends with the Pope and has the ecumenical patriarch in his pocket. So, uh, we're going to try and do that to basically, and I feel like when we get Religious Icon, chances are what's going to happen is the our gate to hell is going to open up under Constantinople, and Satan himself is going to reclaim Cannoli, and maybe the whole planet will sink in. I'm not sure, because I feel like it's harder to get, you know, eviler than what we're looking at here. Additionally, of course, we have the brand new Medieval Arts Ruins tab. So if we have a look here, uh, I, I haven't done too much with this, and I'm not sure it's like a massively fleshed out mechanic or anything like that. It's just a nice fun thing to tie into buildings and kind of, um, you know, your approach to the history of the time, which is an interesting take on, on Crusader Kings, right? Because besides what, like restoring Hellenism, there isn't really much looking back. It's more about kind of that progressing on the innovations and whatnot. So we've got three approaches to dealing with the ruins in our realm. We've got protection, which will... Give us lifestyle experience if we travel through a point of interest ruin. Uh, ruins do not suffer decay unless by choice. So maybe if you say like Iconoclast or something, you might roleplay destroying some ruins or something like that. It's easier to repair them. Uh, we're more likely to receive events about the protection of ruins and have access to unique event options. You can switch approach every 15 years. Then we've got progression. We lose 40 stress while traveling to a point of interest ruin. While repairing a ruin, there's also a chance to improve another building. That's fun. More likely to receive events about progression of ruins and have access to unique event options. And finally, the last one is predation. Doesn't have a tooltip associated with it, apparently. Um, you know, you could probably take a guess of what that means. Famously, ruins all throughout time were taken apart, right? The building material repurposed for houses and all sorts of other minor stuff. So maybe something like that. It's a shame we can't see uh, predation. Not that we were picked 
And of course, because this is a man all about, uh, you know, restoring the glory of his dynasty, going back to the good old days of Charlie Man and uh, everything else he'd had going on, right? Even though we're kind of on the wrong side of Europe for that. But I think out of all of them, progression suits us the most. He's a man who's kind of building up Rome for a little while. We had Rome as our capital until we moved to Constantinople, though we probably will move back. Um, although we did never have Rome as our capital, did we? We moved straight to Constantinople from Cagliari. Either way, we're, we're mired in history. We're steeped in history. So I do think progression and bringing it forward, you know, upgrading all this stuff, rebuilding. Because what we've got right now, we've only got two ruins in our counties. You know, I presume major sites will have them. Like, for example, Alexandria would probably have quite a lot. Maybe even the pyramids. Obviously, Jerusalem, I would assume, would have some. There. Antioch probably also makes sense. So, um, these will all get added on. Right now, we've only got Constantinople and Rome itself. So, that's this building here. This room is indestructible, now falling to decay. Order procession decision can be taken at no cost. Oh, cool, because we have Constantinople. That's fun. Look upon with golden mosaics and marble columns. Columns are... Oh, look at that. It's got a little, it's got a little description of it there. That's a nice attention to detail. Architectural building. Let's want a chapter. The uppermost portion of a column. We've got Doric, Ionian, and Corinthian. It's all the different column styles that you would see across kind of Greco-Roman history. Very cool. Okay. Um, so what, what else can we do with that? Let's have a look here then. So Constantinople, that's all it gives us for now is just those... Um, give some holding bonuses and intrigue per level of famous plus one as well, which is again what's helped this guy really keep his edge, literally. Um, that's great. Okay, so the rune itself gives benefits even if you're not doing anything with it. Let's have a look at this shell of Rome. That would imply we might need to upgrade it a little bit. Oh my god, we've got so much stuff that's going off the screen. That's a good sign. Oh, so both the shell of Rome and Constantinople allow you to order a procession at no cost. So both of our runes give the same effect, but that kind of makes sense, kind of the Eastern Roman Empire, right? Uh, Eastern and Western Roman Empire, so that's pretty interesting. Consecrate ruins. Purify the ruins in your domain so that you still hold on to the... Uh, that still hold on to the old ways so as to curry favors with the more zealous. Interesting. Purify the ruins in your domain. Okay. Gain 50 piety for each ruin in a county you personally hold. So we get 100 piety for that every five years. Uh, so we're trading piety for prestige here. Okay, that seems like a good idea, so that's kind of a cool idea. Um, order processions, pay homage to the undeniable hold that ruins still have on the population. Legitimize your rule on the way by holding a great march across the ancient Porticus Maxime, flanking, so we're in Rome here, the uh, Palatine Hill, the Theater of, Theater of Pompeii, the Field of Mars on the Vatican, um, adored by the entire city of Rome, so we can march through Rome. Each county with a ruin you personally hold gains received procession, so that should, in theory, also transfer over to Constantinople. If we are trying to convert the Byzantine Empire to uh, Catholicism, obviously keeping popular opinion high is going to be super important, because if we get rebellions here, we're in a bit of trouble. There's a lot of very angry people we're probably going to upset with what we're doing here. Well, I mean, we're already upset, but they're too terrified to do anything, and the rest of them love us. What was the other option then? Let's take a quick look here. Synergize with the past. Encourage from above a stronger relationship between the Sardino French culture and its ruins. So as to learn and be inspired by their ancient ways. Ooh, hello. Synergizing with ruins gives 25% cultural fascination progress. That's very cool. Okay, man, these are interesting. So I presume it's three unique decisions per ruins kind of... um. We'll check the others, obviously, at some point, uh, and see what they do, depending on the characters we play. You know, if we're playing, like, a stewardship character, you might be more likely to go for predation, because you can use the bricks from the whatever to blah, 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 blah. You understand what I'm saying. Oh, let's do it then. It's all of the procession. I don't know if there's any follow-up events to that. Even if it's just a minor decision you can take to give you the... Just to give you that. That's kind of fun. That's pretty good. Okay, nice. I'm glad we've got that because it makes me it makes me feel like I've got a bit more. <laughs> it makes me feel like I'm not missing anything. More importantly, that's one that we can kind of oversee around like that. So Rome, my God, I can't believe we've got another building to upgrade in Rome, huh? Ah, uh, I mean, look, station men at arms damage up by ten percent for the blacksmiths is so good. But Rome is, of course, one of the cities of wonder. It's a megalopolis, much like Constantinople, <coughs> and eventually Venice. Oh, God, sorry. I've been doing lots of recording recently, and it's really strained my voice. I'm going to get back into it a little bit. Daily Rim Rim for the last six months has made me soft. Soft and weak. Uh, Latin church. I mean, obviously, I want to build the, the important-looking stuff, right? The great statues rather than just blacksmiths and whatever else. I want to go for the, the high-end stuff. Guilds give some taxes, but I, again, I'm only going to build stuff that costs me thousands. Now, look. 
Grand University is 1500 with Grand Library is 2000 And we all know the Grand Library is better. Monthly lifestyle experience up by 8%. Damn. So even if we don't have the books and, and kind of get to that, you can't go below 12 months, can you, per perk either for, for learning. So honestly, we're probably fine with it. We probably don't have to build that. I think, we're, I think we've almost certainly already reached that point. Um, let's go ahead and cash out a little bit then. So we're going to be doing a lot of building today. And again, we're going to save up a small fortune. It's going to take a while before we can go on our pilgrimage. So let's save up the cash. Now, the thing I did want to mention here is somebody left a comment on the last episode saying uh, that apparently, ooh, we could do with a court physician. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah, oh, shit is right. These are all shit. We need a better court physician then. Um, search for a physician. Yes, please. And that takes me actually quite nicely onto the point I was going to talk about here. Somebody said that the events we've been getting with Cannoli, the one where he slipped in a bath and survived, and the other event where he was having a stroke, somebody said that's what the implication there, or that's what it would have followed up on the event, um, where he was looking in the mirror and he kind of had to shake himself free from it. Otherwise, it would have given him incapable rather than just infirm. Basically, we've dodged these almost... Not really insta-kill mechanics, more than basically that's the end of your character. You sit there being incapable until you die. We've dodged it twice. This man is is very literally saying no to death. Or perhaps more likely, death is too afraid to take him. Can you blame him, really? Next thing death knows, he's got a claim fabricated on him. All his children are dying and his lands have been sieged by, you know, uh, Grim Reaper the second of House Carling. So it's very confusing. Okay, let's have a look then. Caritas. He is a herbalist, a novice physician, but he's getting there. Mastermind Philosopher, 18 learning, not bad. Um, Jabir is 15 learning, a mystic. I don't think we want to be taking those type of gambles. You've got intrigue and you are just novice. Okay, Karatis then. 450 gold, I think, well spent, to be completely honest. It counts as good because he's only a novice physician and his learning isn't that great, but I presume things like genius would affect that quite well. So we are going to marry great uh, Duke Reynold II. Oh, we're forming an alliance with Burgundy, that's right. So I, I formed an alliance ages ago when we were trying to fight Byzantium with Burgundy because we didn't have an alliance with France at that point. This is not really worth it. If we break the alliance, are they going to be upset? Sorry, if they break the patrol, are they going to be upset? I'm not really that bothered, uh, mainly because it's 150 prestige. Oh, I don't give a shit about that. The only reason I'm saying that is because, again, we, we've got, we've now got an alliance with France. There's no point having an alliance with Burgundy when we've already got an alliance with France. That seems a bit, a bit pointless, eh? Okay, we'll keep her in our back pocket. We can marry her out to somebody better, I'm sure. Hello. Well, this is going to take a while. Can I just say, like, oh, we should be torturing these children. What am I doing? Because <laughs> we didn't ever finish off Dark Insights, did we? Um, in fact, we can go two more levels on it. God damn, this guy's getting sharper and sharper. If we go back to the Intrigue focus and we get two more, that would take us up to 46 Intrigue. In his prime, I believe he had 47. And that was before he became infirm, incapable, whatever we've got going on right now. Um, let's... Oh, we're not incapable. Sorry, I just couldn't remember which way around the traits were. We are infirm. Let's go ahead and torture you then. Boom. Lazarus Antiochos. It had to be done. We didn't gain anything. So we're just gonna... Just gonna, like, just go through. Nice, Dark Insights prowess, come on. We can't torture children, that's, that's bullshit. That's, what ridiculous game is this? Okay, here we go. Here we go, come on. Ah, oh, damn children. Oh, they're all children. That one's not. That one's not gonna torture. Dark Insights prowess. Oh, we did gain one more. Was that two prowess, one intrigue? Oh, that's pretty good. This guy has a minus 47 for old age, and he still has plus two. Oh, dear. Still has plus, plus two prowess. I think I cancelled one that we could have gained a secret rather than torture, but that's okay. Well, now you're all tortured, you can leave. See you later. Thank you for visiting. Hope you enjoyed your time here. It's like going to Botlands, isn't it? What do you mean if you broke out? <gasps> I think I tortured one of her relatives. No, she hasn't got any living relatives. Was it your mother? Did I just torture your mother? I don't know who I tortured. Actually, why are you upset with me? What have I done? Uh, Executed my dynasty member. Demanded my conversion, rival murderer, declared war. Oh, she's just angry at me for, you know, wronging her and, and demanding that she change her, her her traditional religion and then taking her land and all of her autonomy and power away. So I think that's fair. I hope I didn't accidentally execute someone when I was trying to clear all of these, all of those back-to-back -back pop ups You can understand why I might do a thing like that, I hope. I'm not going to sit there and read every single torture. My God, if we'd have done that always with this guy, it would have never ended. We'd still be looking through those first lot of torches that we did ages ago. Hybrid culture. Oh, how lovely. Kurdo Buryat hybrid. Very nice. Um, this guy, nobody wants him. 
we'll just leave him there then. Let him let him rot. Okay, so we are down to whole of body. Which is kind of nuts. 20% uh, extra fertility, medium health boost, minus 20% stress gain. That means that this guy has basically ascended to become totally zen. He will never get any more stress ever. What's his health like? Still feeling fine. Damn. He's basically never going to die. Because he's been feeling fine. Bear in mind, he dipped down. And then we brought him right back up really fast with getting all the books on learning and, and healing and things like that. Again, I think that's legitimate for this character. I think he had a vested interest in poisons and, and avoiding death. Given that that's kind of what he's dealt with in his entire life. If anybody knows death, it should be cannoli. Then after that, of course, getting all of this stuff from the scholarship tree really has shored him up even further. So actually, we're probably very, very high up in health. But I think there's probably an arbitrary limit that's placed on characters above a certain age. Like you can't be like feeling fantastic at the age of 900. What do you think? Scholar or theologian? You can be interested in theology whilst also being cynical of the religion. Which I think is, I think it's, I think it's fine. You know, you can still just be interested in that aspect without actually following it devoutly. You don't have to be a zealot for that type of thing. Anyway, let's have a look at our royal court. We've got a lot of stuff going on. My court has been renowned for their luxurious level of hospitality on offer, and the guests here prove useful. One such hanger on, a guy who won't leave because it's so luxurious, is Ahmed. Oh, there's my court jester. Oh, no, that's not my court jester. Where's my ecumenical patriarch gone? I could be him. No, he's just another orthodox bishop. Weird. Um. As a guest of Caliph Bulge. Is that Bulge? I think that says Bulge, yeah. Um, and seems to eat enough for 12. We can let him stay. We are an extravagant host. We lose 1% of our monthly income. We gain cr prestige and core grandeur. Cannoli knows that that money is a drop in the bucket. But having an esteemed guest stay here and report back to his Caliph saying, This is the best day of my damn life. Uh, this guy is incredible. He's so wealthy. He gives me everything I could ever want. Sends a message. That's how whispers start. Whispers in our favor. Let him stay. Or, what's a perfect job for him? Make him food taster. Man might be actually fine with that. I'm not going to make him food taster because he could be a spy, of course. Distrust of friendship. Is that Sevelum? Compared to a regular person. He does. Somebody said, like, he gives off massive mountain vibes from Game of Thrones. He really does, doesn't he? Especially in that full bassinet. He's a scary looking fella. Anxiety knots my stomach, who woo, as my jealousy rears its ugly head. I sigh and glare at the cause of my misery. Our guest Abin seems to get along with Savalin, but there's something about how the two interact that worries me. The smiles are the kind of lifelong friends or devoted lovers. Oh. I don't hate this matchup. I'm just going to say, uh, whatever their relationship may be, I'll stay out of it. Uh, the spike of interest in each other peters out to how it was before. Look, she has served a purpose, this uh, French marriage. She has produced a bunch of other genius children, except for this kid, which has gone a bit awry. Um, that was just called Beatrix. Oh, right, that's because they had... No, why did I not rename her? I'm not sure. Malapita, yeah, no, I, I remember... I, I renamed everyone else. Fry's <laughs> Pudding with Honey is a, just an awful name. Um, then we've got Savalon the second there. I, I think our goal becomes that same to play as Savalon the second, because Savalon the first is going to be like... We're going to... He's going to die of old age before we are. Let's put it that way. Let me tell you up all these acolytes. It's such a pain in the ass. To be fair, they're not nearly as bad as they used to be now that we're in Byzantium, because we've got that... Um, can we marry off matrilineally to... Uh, you worth keeping in court? You are a very good spy master. I I'll keep you in court. You've got... Comely and Genius. Now, what we need to start doing... Genius, I feel like, is very well cemented into the dynasty. Not that's how it works. You know, maybe maybe whoever was in charge of the Colin dynasty chose Genius as the, um, the, the congenital trait to strengthen. Although, I think you can only do it with intelligence. So, ignore me entirely. What we do need are... Are the physical traits line. Robust, Herculean, Hail. Um, any of them will do because that will allow us to consecrate the bloodline. All we need is, is all three traits, but one maxed out, and that, that gives us what we need. So I'm going to say, like, inheritable, and I'm going to sort by... The sensible thing to do would be, like, pick someone like Bashir Carling, who's hale and intelligent. That way we keep the intellect, but hale is all we need. That's, like, the minimum. That's, like, all we need just to tick that off. As much as I like Herculean, its inheritance chance is lower. So if we just want to get it into the dynasty and just have people kicking around with, like, genius and some of this, this would be a good idea. So we're just going to go with... um. Radagost. Yeah, I think that's fine. He's not really anybody special, but he's, he's you know, she's kind of low down the list. It's a matrilineal marriage. We get some prestige for it. It's not a big deal. 
Okay, King Constantinos. We have a strong hook on him, of course, yeah. I'll take some money from you, my friend. Saving up for that pilgrimage that I think we'll go on in a second. Mattia. Intelligent and handsome. Again, this is fine. As long as we don't drop below intelligent, we can make any character work. Matty, I'm going to go look up... Oh, I was going to say I'll look up some uh, dishes from this particular region. We've got Greece to pull from. And we've got, of course, Anatolia, modern-day Turkey. So I'm going to name you Turkish Delight. A delicious, delicious treat. I actually am a big fan of Turkish Delight, so that's perfect for you, my friend. Oh! Me and my counselors are gathering for the meeting... As me and my counsel are gathering for the meeting, comma, my dog Lucifer approaches me with begging eyes and a drooping tail. He does not like to be left alone, but this more this is an important meeting. I would never click the option to slam the door shut in front of the dog's begging eyes. Cannoli is a monster. He is a devil, but everybody has a soft side. He will join me. The latest work about my acquaintance, uh, of my acquaintance, Duke Chudmund, has become all the rage. Is he also in August? That's a nice crown you've got. I think we've been a trendsetter with fashion. He's dedicated it to me. Men need not l fear as lives depart, crossing to quiet death with noble heart. Tis rare enough for men to admit that given the chance, they change quite a bit. That is heartfelt. That's nice. It's not the nicest I've heard, but it's pretty all right. Lucifer is at the council meeting. I'm sorry, Emperor Canoli, says my spy master. I have to disagree with what you just... Rrr. Lucifer gives a guttural growl and Minnie the Saint Agatha jerks back, looking from the dog at me. Oh, on second thoughts, I think it's a great idea. Such a good boy, Lucifer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he plays such mind games, even with his own counsel. Oh, even the dog is a manipulation master. They were they were in on it. That dog was like, don't worry, don't worry, watch this. We'll 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 put some fear into them. Okay then, let's actually do something of value today. 3,168 gold to do the pilgrimage. So that's what we've got to save up here. That's also not including uh, the cost for experience. Captains, let's get the Caravan Master on board too. There we go. Um, 3,195 in total. I guess we would go with... Uh, look, we don't need to go on altruism. Everybody loves us. Everybody knows that we're such a kind, nice, kindly old man who's just looking to bring stability to the realm. We need to prove that... Uh, you know, we were looking to for, for opportunities to share your convictions with others. That's right. We are not firm in our beliefs. That much is wrong. But we are definitely looking to uh, convince other people we are firm in our beliefs. So I think that would be the right play. Only got to save up another 900 or so gold and then we can actually head out here. Now, what I have checked, uh, and this is what I was kind of interested in. Every single holy site is the same value to us. So Canterbury, for example, up in England, uh, which is my city. That is, uh, like, three points for distance, and then, like, one points its unique Christian holy site. Same with Castile. Um, the Vatican, though, even though it's less distance, gains a bonus point because it is, uh, like, a unique Christian site, same as Jerusalem. So, and then, like, Cologne is the same as uh, Canterbury. So, they're all the same distance. I feel like we should probably go to our own domain. Seems like it might be a safer journey. It's not as interesting, but it, it's all the same thing. I was born this day 90 years ago. The older I get, the more I cherish our relationship. So it saddens me my wife, Sabeel, or any of my friends haven't reached out. Oh, how terrible. But it's the fucking Pope and Savalum. I love that the Pope, even with his very, very pointy hat, isn't as tall as Savalum. Oh, looks like they're holding hands. What a surprise. All my nearest and dearest friends. Ah. Oh. I love that the Pope's known as Pope Sergius the Old. Meanwhile, we're like... Eight years older than him. Oh, that's so nice. What a lineup, huh? God, this is so cursed. I can't even begin to... I, I lack the correct words to put into perspective how fucked up Cannoli is as a character. He just really has taken this whole thing by storm. Like, he's overshadowed every other predecessor. He's just totally got control over every situation, except for basic warfare. Um, we'll take the large gift. Oh, a dagger. Thank you. That'll sell it. Get that sold immediately. Oh, my God. Art imitates life. Although I had a full night of rest, the quality of sleep must have not been good because I'm feeling drowsy today. I had to stay awake. Lack of good sleep for three years. <laughs> Try five. Stress gain, stress loss increases, lifestyle experiences down. Not that's relevant because I don't even know what to do with his lifestyle. Or a quick nap. Just a few minutes. It'll do me good. We lose prestige, but we gain power naps. Can I be honest with you? Uh... <sighs> I was going to say he's in such a powerful position. 
I think he, he would just like take a nap and not give a fuck, and everybody would be like, "Ah, yeah, please take a nap," just so they get they, they get a little bit of relief. They know he can't be planning to murder them while he's sleeping, right? Um, or we say I have to stay awake, and he keeps up appearances. Yeah, you know what? I feel like he would again. He, his life has all been about that facade, that double life. He doesn't want people to know that he slipped in the bath and almost died or, or you know, had a stroke but managed to somehow pull himself together. <laughs> just come on. Just why are you having a stroke? Are you stupid or something? You can pull yourself out of that. So I think he's I think he's trying to keep that facade, that veneer going. And I think that's probably how we're playing right up until the day that it inevitably kills him. Judessa Bertha. Welcome. I accept your generous gifts. Thank you. And what generous gifts they are because we've almost got, in fact, we've got enough money now, if I'm not mistaken, to go on our pilgrimage. We could go on one of these, gr the grandest and most expensive pilgrimage every 10 months if we wanted to. We could have something like, what, 10 years? We're, we're doing pretty well, I'd say. Let's do it then. Pilgrimage. Let's head out there. We're going to go on a Pyrus pilgrimage because worldly pilgrimage is massively so relevant. The next character might be a good idea to do a worldly pilgrimage. Um, and we are going to go to change to uh, the Vatican. So there you go. Look, unique holy site gives a point. Unique Christian holy site gives a point. Two points for respectable distance. Minus uh, and the negatives to that are the high cost, but that's okay. Jerusalem, again, four points as well. And again, the same for everywhere. Santiago is the same. Cologne is the same. And then Canterbury is the same as well. So why don't we go to our own domain? We haven't been back to Rome in a while. It'd be nice to, uh, nice to see the, the sights and sounds. Go see chef country, allegedly. Alleged chef country. Let's uh, go all in on the pomp, I suppose. Both of them give, like, more piety, don't they? That one gives much more piety, though. Um, and then let's take uh, Zealotry. Because this, like I said, is a, is a slap on God's face if we manage to pull this one off. We are about to pants God. And I'm all about that life. No danger. Absolutely no threats whatsoever. This will not kill him. Let's head out. A fresh start. I am pleased to embark on this pilgrimage to Rome in order to get closer to God, he says. With his fingers crossed behind his back, as we traverse the flatlands, trudging through the grass, we encounter a modest wayward shrine, naively carved its ports across at its head. Um, Saint Enth Enthus and uh, Eustathia. That has a nice ring to it. Very good. Patronize that local saint. Popular opinion plus 10, we lose 150 gold. 150 gold is quite literally pocket change at this point. While traveling in uh, Tra... Ian... Tra... Anoopolis. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Anybody who has ever been even remotely close to Greece, let alone any great people watching this. We discover to our horror that a number of our food supplies have gone bad. There aren't any settlements nearby, so we need to forage and hunt. Oh no, his sweeties. Um... Yeah, no. Always try and keep to the healthier option. No one's going to see him out here on the road. God, you're also enormous. What are you feeding these people? Clearly not sweeties. Otherwise, Cannoli would be the biggest man of all. I start to realize how much Count Bogos and I have in common. Oh. Um. Am I not convinced? No, it would stress him out. He actually likes Count Bogos. That's fine. Oh, dear. What in the world has happened to my grandson, Savalum? He's all bruised and beaten and he refused his name who did it to him. Was it an older child or did he pass through noble to the point of fury? Now he's all but stopped talking and constantly hides away when there are people nearby. Poor boy. Oh, he's being abused. No. Dear boy, you don't have to talk to anyone if you don't want to. It keeps the trait shy. That simply will not do. You can't have a shy military leader. There are enemies everywhere. You must learn that. Paranoid or you should have run away, child. We can't have that one. Oh. Which one? Now, shy isn't necessarily negative for a um, martial ruler. It really doesn't change much at all about him. It's a diplomacy hit. But I've got to ask myself, what would Cannoli do? And, of course, he would say, there are enemies everywhere. You must learn that. Even though it's not necessarily true, and even though my character isn't paranoid, he knows that you should be paranoid with a man like him skulking around. As we make our way through Serres, we are approached by a Sardino French commoner claiming to be the leader of a group of Catholic pilgrims. Good, Emperor, we have been on the road to Vatican for weeks, but the roads are dangerous and now we're short on provisions. We'd be forever grateful if you were to support us. Of course, join me. Gautier, hello, my friend. Or Gauthier. <laughs> have some coin for your troubles. Of course, my friend, join us. Homeward bound. After a long day of travel, the horizon starts to burn into warm colors. I take a moment to pause, close my eyes, and breathe. Careful, my caravan leader Batu screams, pointing the planes behind the path. There's a small rodent running in the wild, and after it, a gray figure I easily recognize. Oh, Lucifer. It's a martial challenge. 
Batu might try and find the pet, or Batu might get lost trying to find the pet and get wounded. Lucifer is smarter than all of us. He'll find his way back. I think he probably will. I'll personally find you, my dear Lucifer, or everyone after him. No. Come on. Track him down. It doesn't take much to track down the growling of broken twigs. Lucifer sits over a leaf litter, licking his gray paws from the blood of his victim. The squirrel is almost unrecognizable. Very good. I knew you'd be successful. Well done, or I'll never take my eyes off you again. No, you know what? Him and this dog are like, they're, they're scheming together at this point. That dog's got like 25 intrigue, which normally sounds impressive, but it's kind of pathetic on average in Cannoli's court. The Catholic world was shocked to learn that my patriot was caught in flagrante delicto with several young servants. Shocking. Terrible. Who could have guessed that he would do such a thing? Condemn him. Con absolutely condemn him. Catholicism's further decreases, but maybe he shouldn't be in flagrante delictio with a bunch of young people. It seems that our caravan has become a little lost in these foreign lands. Uh, why do you give me these names? Batu has been trailing us around Gynaikokastron for hours. And though he at last swallowed his pride and asked for directions, he does not appear to be an expert Greek speaker. Fortunately, it's all Greek to Cannoli, and fortunately, Cannoli is a speaker of... Do, he do speak Greek. He do Greek speak. <laughs> it's probably something far funnier in there than me just saying words that rhyme. <laughs> Thanks to intelligent efforts, my caravan master, Batu, found a safe shortcut. Thank you, my friend. God, this is a long-ass journey. Why is there so much stuff happening? Where the fuck are we? We haven't even left... We haven't even left Byzantium yet. We've barely left Thessalonica. For God's sake. As we continue our journey onward, Orid, our feet, as we continue our journey through Orid, our feet grow sore and weary. There's a reason they call it Orid. Uh, we spy a local noble trying to help us. You're lost, friends. What brings a lowly Catholic to Orid? We're on a sacred journey. Join us. We could convert him. He's an orthodox forgiving fool. Come on. Come on, Cannoli. You might not be a diplomacy expert, and you might not be that good in learning, although he is very good at diplomacy. You can win him over. And my god, yes, you did. Legendary. When we get there, I expect this to be... Oh, visited the capital of the Byzantine Empire. We're getting 200 stewardship. Sorry, where do you think the capital of the Byzantine Empire is, out of curiosity? Dyrrhachion? I don't think it is. Of course I know him. He's me. Among my fellow pilgrims, there's a man who preaches compassion and fellowship until he reaches the topic of heathens. He loudly declares them all to be abominable monsters in the eyes of God, deviants and child murder us all. Do you agree, oh emperor? Yes, your emperor agrees. You should kill people wantonly. That's it, you gotta sow the seeds, of course. Cannoli he likes to re revel in chaos. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we're doing it just so people think we're a more devout Catholic, but it works quite well for him. As my entourage travels through a small town, I feel a tug at the hem of my clothes. Turning to look, I see a thin, raggedy man staring up at me. Oh, great lord, I beg you for a coin. Could you spare some coins for a poor beggar? I'm starving, and none of the locals will aid me. That accent was purely uh, incidental, by the way. One more coin and I could buy a pair of shoes. Thank you, kind sir. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank God, was it? Thank them too, but oh, generous Lord, if I could ask another favor. My sister is sick and desperately needs medicine. Your money could save her life. Please, we were most grateful for you. Uh, yes. Okay, for medicine. Wonderful. Uh, wonderful. May she... Uh, he's not going to sound so weak anymore, right? Wonderful. May she soon recover from her sickness. But if I could ask just one more favor... My sister, she has children. As, and, well, you know how kids are. They eat so much. If you could provide some food for them as well... And we'll say, fine, yes. No child should go hungry. We have so far given... Uh, what is that? 900, we've given like 350, oh, 1,350 gold to this man. Yeah, no child should go hungry. Ah, many thanks upon you, my lord. I am gratefully indebted indeed. There must be something to which I can uh, never repay you. God's generosity is great indeed. I shall sing his praise until the end of days. Ah, uh, or... You forgot, I gave these also. Would you leave the best behind? You lose vengeful and gain compassionate. No. He would never, ever, ever do such a thing. Is this man good? He's not. He's an idiot. You're welcome. Go with God's blessing. Your pilgrimage becomes very pious. He's here to be pious in the eyes of the people. This man will go back to his village and he'll say, You'll never guess... <laughs> Obviously, he wouldn't need to affect the voice anymore. You'll never guess who I saw on the roads. It was our emperor, Cannoli. And my God, he gave us all this money. Rumor will spread, of course, very far of this man coming back with an emperor's wealth. And that's how you get a good name out there into the world, my friends. 
Pilgrims flock to Rome from all over the Christian world. Some follow the the, the Via Francigena. That means via France. Others take the well, well less known paths, the less well known paths even. In the end, we all converge here at St. Peter's Basilica, where the great man himself was put to rest. Sounds like they executed him. Standing here with the other pilgrims, I sense a feeling of solemn unity and fellowship shared amongst the gathered, all having overcome various trials and tribulations along their journey. We are already at level three piety, and we haven't even started the Roman aspect of it yet. Uh, nice. We gain the trait pilgrim. All of your entourage members gain the trait pilgrim or pilgrim. Uh, you lose 22 stress. Very good. Mini de Saint Agatha trots around with our pilgrimage troop, loudly sighing and dragging her feet. It feels like we've been here for ages, isn't it? Start to go home soon, she mutters impatiently. I shoot her a sideways glance and can't believe the nerve of her. And I tighten my fist. He's about to beat her. Your pilgrimage becomes more pious. We're going to shout at her. You're no longer close. Are, are we particularly close? Daughter and spy master. Come, let me show you this marvelous statue. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's, it, it doesn't befit this man. It's not very pious, and he knows that, even though he's not trying to be pious. Ooh, can I have that event back, please? He, kn yes, there we are. Um, yeah, no, come, let me show you this marvelous statue. Even though he is vengeful, uh, she, he knows that she's useful. He knows he's only doing this to keep up appearances. She hasn't done anything wrong. He'd be saying that if he, too, was dragged halfway across the world, because he's not a religious man. So we're going to stick with it. And look, we're almost at maximum piousness. Something Brother Labaget could never have achieved. Now you can go, child. I hear Aramundu mutter when I enter the church. The pilgrim bows before leaving. I can see the priest's hands glisten with gold. Ah, dear emperor, do you wish to absolve your sins? Pope Sergius has issued an order to grant indulgence. 20 pilgrims visiting Vaticano for the right price, that is. Um, shall we intercede with God? And he becomes our friend. Oh, that's good. He's our patriarch. That's quite helpful. Um... Obviously, becoming patriarch with uh, friends with the patriarch and the pope is pretty good. Be useful to get one for Savalum, or how can one buy entrance to heaven? We're deceitful, and again, this is what this is all about, right? He's a deceitful man, so of course we would go for the most deceitful things. Um, useful to get one for Savalum? Is he a particularly? Ma he's not even a sinner. He's he's not a very good character. Patient, stubborn, arrogant. He's like a block-headed warrior. Like, he's very powerful in the arm, but I don't think he's good enough to be leading the realm. Whereas this kid has a bit more of a, oh, I don't know, greedy, deceitful, and bossy. This kid's going to be worse. They're all going to be conceited all the way down. All right, you know what? Intercede with God for me, and look at that. We are now maximum piousness. Totally maxed out the piousness here. You bought an indulgence with his approval. Very good. And we're still here for another 30 days. Should be at least two more events in that time. Ooh. Ooh. A pilgrim puts down a votive doll before the altar. Bowing her head, I see Aramundu blessing her and muttering something in her ear. Holy, I managed to hear. Oh, I wonder what they were talking about. Have you seen the potholes out there? The bishop makes a gesture. Do you also bring something to have blessed, dear emperor? Um, shall we make Joyous more pious? Holy crap. Joyous gains plus 2% monthly piety. That's pretty all right. Let everyone see the fame of Joyeuse skin. 0.5% monthly prestige. That's clearly far more significant. Or, a better thing is doing my gold. Um, honestly, I think in the long term, the prestige is probably a bit more useful, eh? So we're going to go with that one. We're going to go to religious procession. Ooh. You lost St. Bridget's... What the hell? We put on glasses? You lost St. Bridget's scapula. Oh, I uh, maybe we had an event option. It's just put on glasses. Everybody who visits Rome gets a free pair of glasses. That explains why the Pope's wearing them. Damn, he looks cool, though. Okay, I'm all right with that. Rome, it's been an honor. I know why. Hold. Um, Emperor Canola gains the trait pilgrim. It wasn't actually as much piety as I expected. Um, we gained 812 piety, 60 trait experience in the pilgrim trait, and uh, we become determined pilgrim for 10 years because we have a particular tenant. That's fine. 2% monthly piety per night. That's not bad at all. Finish the pilgrimage. I think I know why, and I think that's probably because uh, there's probably a... Uh, I imagine the Italian culture has um, some sort of innovation, some sort of... My God. Holy shit, Italian has finished all of the late medieval stuff. I was going to say, there's probably something here, Renaissance thought, perhaps, that uh, gives us that aspect. Yeah, because look at how far we are behind by comparison. Although we are about to hit Valet, which gives us the uh, Gendarmes, which is pretty good. Condossieri would also be pretty nice. Same culture, mercenary high cost down. When we've sitting on so much cash, that basically means there's no war that we couldn't win. 
Even that war yesterday where I was just throwing bodies on the pile. I think we'd probably be fine. Shit, well, there we are then. One. I, did, I, I really, really wanted to max out the pieties today, but we're actually only halfway there, so we're going to have to really double down. But spies have informed me about a hunter causing a, luck, a ruckus at a local tavern. Oh. A scheme is afoot. I think we will disrupt schemes. We don't need our spy master helping us out with scheming. His intrigue is, is again, uh, uh, as high as it's ever been. He's beyond his peak. And those glasses, my god, don't they look so stylish? Oh, I love that the background, that's a cool attention detail, is reflected in his glasses. Because he's on a planes. I imagine, yeah, look at that, it does change. Impressive. It is known that for the, I mean, it's probably just like a 3D asset in the skybox, so it's probably just a reflection. It's known that the people of Alif seem to, uh, Alife seem to profess a special devotion towards their knights. Actually, to be fair, given that this is still a, this is still a, pilgrimage i bet we could get up to that like almost immediately tomorrow right because we're not we're not technically done yet um we'll follow the night my lord it is most fortunate you found me uh, there is a fountain said to cure all illness maybe this is where a bit of cannolis uh he is infirm after all maybe this is where cannolis darker side comes to fruition healing water the night leads us to a small clearing where natural fancy glimmers. The light reflects on its surface with a blissful shimmer and makes it look like the water so bright it feels like a second sun. Careful. A beast. A guardian. The night points at a stag standing in between us and the fountain. Don't fear. I shall fight it. You will not. I'll distract it. You get the water. 75% chance your distraction works and he becomes the owner of the healing water. Or you shall make a fine distraction and we get healing water. Does it cure all illnesses? It's only a minus 10% stress gain. Um, He will join us if we help him. He's not that good. I want the water. We just threw a man to a stag. We're very pious. We just threw a man to a stag so we could steal its water. Okay. Health small boost. Health medium boost. These all give learning lifestyle experience, which was kind of the main reason we were going for it, right? Learning. Health boost again. Oh, man. I was kind of hoping we could do something. I was curious if there was maybe an effect that it has. But there are some artifacts in CK3 that can have like a different variant. I wonder if you can get like water from the Fountain of Youth or something like that. Was that an event in CK2? Or was that one we added for Dungeon Master? I don't remember. That might be some of my own bullshit. Greetings, Emperor Cannoli of the Byzantine Empire. I'm willing to release your port pass. I don't know who he is. Um, yeah. I'm hoping we get a couple more events. If not, maybe just for today's episode we can stretch it a little bit further. Um, an architect. Oh my god, hang on. You are deceitful, diligent, ambitious, fortune builder, and architect with 24 stewardship. I wonder if you would make, believe it or not, a good architect. What does the drawing do? Castle building construction time minus 20% is actually pretty damn nice, but we're not exactly building buildings. I was saving up for the... <laughs> We've made all our money back in the short time we were gone on that uh, pilgrimage. The skills would be useful at court. Absolutely. Replaced Emperor Sabeel as court architect. She'll be fine with that. You know, she's getting older. Maybe she's ready to retire as well. Um, let's have a look at his aptitude, see if he was actually worth it. Uh, court architect. Um, building construction. Oh, aptitude. Excellent. Whoa, very nice. Building construction time minus 30%. We should start upgrading Byzantium. We should definitely go back to Rome and build some stuff there now that we've got the cash for it. Yeah. No, that guy's, that guy's quite nice. Um... No, we'll find another path. We trust our people. That's another superstition or whatever the hell's going on there. Savalum. Savalum, I was going to pay your tuition. It's 4,500 gold. So it's nice that that caps at 4,500 gold, even if that is monstrously expensive. Um, it's not worth it at this time. No, I don't believe it is. Because again, he's genius. We are intelligent. The kid's coming out pretty well. He's kind of disappointed for Marsh character. He's... He, he could still be as good as his father with a, with a little bit of training. And if he comes out with a level 4 education, he's... He's going to get there. We're just hoping for some good trait development now. Our journey is so violently interrupted by the sound of tearing flesh and gnashing jaws. It's a wolf. Um, help him, Carper. Oh, this man deserves my help. An infirm cannoli. He's got his glasses now so we can see what he's doing. An infirm 91-year-old fighting a wolf seems like a poor idea. Um, I won't risk my life for this. No, absolutely not. You just get yourself and him killed. I don't think anybody's expecting you to... Uh, Oh, we visited Constantinople. Your antiquarian greatly improves in aptitude. Oh, that's cool. And there we are. 315 prestige due to Sons of the Capital tradition. That's cool that that tradition... I was a little bit worried about that, that we chose a, a Roman tradition. Um, 
And I was, a little, again, a little bit worried that that would only affect Rome. But it, it affects basically the whole of the significance of the Empire. Of course, like Eastern Roman Empire 2 is supposedly included. Let's take a quick look at that before I forget, just in case anybody's curious. Um, Sons of the Capital. Okay, so it's all about the ruined stuff. Yeah, Glory of Rome. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Well, here we are. We are... Oh, man. He's 91 years of age, and we still have a long way to go before we hit religious icon we will i believe i strongly believe we'll be able to do it with this character we're, we're just over halfway there problem is the pilgrimage goes on cooldown for what 10 years five years two years i'm not sure um oh we can just go again can we why <laughs> why are we allowed to just immediately go again hang on are we allowed to just go again oh shit we can just immediately head off the limiting factor is gold and let me be clear, gold is no limiting factor. You know, I said we were going to do a pilgrimage. I lied. Tomorrow, we're going to open it with another pilgrimage, and we are going to become religious icon, and we are going to slap God right in his face. Even God is going to be like, you know what, Cannoli, come up to heaven. And then he's going to be like, I'm a bit suspicious of that fella. Look into our backstory. Holy shit. What have I done? But it's too late. There's no taxi backsies when it goes to heaven. Thank you for joining me. See you all tomorrow.